Hey everybody, my name is Drew Schaefering and I'm happy to be here, Hairbrain Live. I'm here with my model Gisette, say hello. And today what we're doing is we're doing really, really long hair, layering bulk removal. So Gisette has really thick, dense, long hair. And the idea is we're sectioned out and pre-done a little bit of her haircut. So I'm gonna spin and have you look up. So we sectioned from the radial, separating the front from the back, and we divided that from the top front part. And in the back, we just isolated everything above the round of the head in the, the biggest section being up here. So reasoning for that is we're bulk cutting. So working behind the chair or in really, really fast means, rushing isn't always the idea, but working efficiently is. So when we're working with long hair, the idea today is softness. So everything that we're doing, we want to have softness. So in order to keep and maintain the exterior and the perimeter to keep bulk and shape, what we're doing is we're going through and really concaving and freeform cutting some of these layers working into the lengths. Now we've already isolated the length out just to make it easy so we know that no matter how short we cut this, this is still safe. So we're working this, combing it nice, clean, and controlled and we're gonna bring everything to the middle. So if we talk about having blueprints for haircuts, everything that I cut on Gisette's haircut is going to be in the middle, centrifugally like that, working concave inside to out. So for those of us out there that take section, section, repeating, that's absolutely okay. With this bulk method, what we're doing is we're getting rid of the majority of the bulk and the weight that we don't want, and then we're gonna go back through and refine it. So it's not about getting everything perfect at once, it's about just getting rid of the excess. So for those of you that have not met me or haven't had the chance to work with, um, again, my name is Drew Schaefering. At Drew Schaefering is my social handle. And I am based here in New York. I live in Brooklyn. And I'm an educator and international artist with L'Oreal Professionnel. So for any of you who are L'Oreal salons, uh, or PPD salons, I would love to come work with you and your staff. I also uh, get to travel internationally working, creating content, doing shows for L'Oreal, as well as in the fashion world with editorial and different styling for shoots or runway like that. Uh, in between all of those projects, I work with a select group of clientele, and I feel like right now our clientele is really wanting a different type of connection and experience. But how often do you get your haircuts? Is that? Probably once a year. Once a year. Okay. And so when you go to get your hair cut, do you like going to a traditional salon? I do. And what is it about the traditional salon that you like? Um, I love the experience. Um, I love the conversation. I love the ambiance. And I love to get to know the artists and their story too, actually. Okay. So it's a, it's a lot about connection for you as well. Correct. So I think that... When we're working, especially with such long hair, it can be a challenge on a time frame to get through clients, but still have that kind of connection with them. So when we're looking and creating blueprints for haircuts to work from, this is a sectioning technique that I learned several years ago, and it still stays relevant and true. I just don't perform it and carry it out the same way every time. So really what it is, is it's working again radially off of the the separation from the front to the back. And we prepped her hair with a little bit of mythic oil. So being a L'Oreal Professional artist, I tend to work mostly with L'Oreal Professional and we prepped her hair with some mythic oil here just for moisture. Uh, I love heaviness in hair and like a sense of uh, elasticity. We've seen so much dry, dry, dry hair lately with the dry texturizing sprays and the curling iron. It really has this like different tack to it. So I'm working with more um, pliable products. So I also mixed both the Shuomura oil and cream as well as one of my favorite new products. So it's Texture Transformer and it's by L'Oreal Professional with Techniart. And what I love about it is now when we're dealing with these products, this has just like a gel cream elastic aspect to it. It's like an elastane. So whatever we add it to, it's going to thicken up but keep it soft and pliable as opposed to the dry sprays that just kind of get too roughed up in your in your hair. And Carol Ann is asking, did you already cut length or did you start with layers and why? Thank you, Carol Ann, that's a good question. So I pre-cut very, very basic, an idea for where her length was gonna come up to. 
general rule of thumb from when I work is when I work inside out, the, the perimeter is the last thing I finish. And the reason for that is it's a little bit more liberating and it gives a little bit more uh, freedom. I don't want to be dictated by that length because too often I've cut the length down here and then I go to create my layers and it doesn't match up. So if my goal is to bulk remove, I go inside out. I did, however, cut just a little bit for time's sake. That's a good question, thank you. And could you do this on dry hair? Another good question. So I usually do do this on dry hair mostly. Um, Gisette has so much hair that I wanted to be able to control it a little bit more. And if you, as we turn her, you can see the, the beautiful wave in her hair. On dry, that's not going to stay true for me. And it's really, I'm a big person in a blueprint with details that are customized. So when we can see these ringlets, when we can see her texture, it's allowing me to dictate and work with it as I cut to see if we need to add more layering or loosen up the bottom. So again, the goal is as we see these layers starting to lift up, protecting the perimeter and adding volume down here, but shifting this. Gisette earlier was talking to me and saying that you were losing volume as your hair's gotten long, right? That's correct, yes. So for each strand, the longer it grows, the more it weighs. And so a lot of our clients, as their hair gets longer and longer, they lose volume. So by inverting and cutting away the center, the crown where we want that volume and leaving the lengths everywhere else, it gives our clients the perimeter of the volume as well as the, the layering of the volume at the top. So I have not cut this section. So as I work in through here, I already have a guide that I'm working from that I started. So this is a, our shortest layer in the haircut right here. So I'm bringing that guide up with me and again, this is going to change with every haircut. So this is a general guide for shortness right here. Everything in my fingers, above my finger, technically could be cut out. Now with each client, the density is gonna be really different. So each time we look at it, what I'm looking for is I use white comb, white crux comb and dark hair. Helps me imagine my line quicker. By using a triple clamp where I make a peace sign, then my ring finger comes on the opposite side. That gives me enough tension to where I can stop and look at it. There I find my guide. Now I can look at the density in the shadow and as we start to cut, move appropriately, whether it's too fast or too uh, shallow in terms of how much we're taking out. So as my scissors move, my hands have to move almost as if they're matched and paired together. If my scissors move too much, I'm cutting without moving. And if my hands move too fast, I'm not cutting enough. So those sections that we just did, in theory, take about five to six minutes. It takes a little bit more time just to section. And the, bra or the, the blueprint, the base of the haircut's done. Now we're just manipulating her texture, letting it start to dry, and detailing it for her so it really, really suits her the best. And Drew, if someone wanted to bring you into their salon for education, how would they do that? So for anybody who would, uh, would like to work together education, you can feel free to DM me, reach out to me at Drew Schaffering. You can send me an email, drew at drewschaferinghair.com. Um, L'Oreal Professional books me in salon as well as PPD classes. So you can contact your distributor, your L'Oreal Professional supplier, as well as um, I started doing crux workshops where we focus a lot on different artistic mediums outside of hair. So you can also find me, reach me as a DM at Crux Brand as well. So now what we're doing is we're approaching the face framing. So we've already layered through here, pulling everything to the center, which threw the length and the weight towards the face. Now we just have to detail all of that length and weight. So I'm combing the hair forward towards the face, but it's in natural fall here, so it's all going down. A lot of us have made the mistake of combing forward with our comb vertically, and we cut this hair that lives back here at the top where it's shortest. Once that's cut, then it can pop way back here and be a surprise. So we wanna comb down in natural fall as the hair's gonna lay. And again, I'm over the top of my section so I can see what I'm cutting. laying those layers in and I'm working my way down to where I want to start to see the layers. So this is the top layer from her layering pattern. 
Now we're just going to go through and carve a little bit more weight out of those dead ends down through there. So this is where I love using a longer comb. And when I was creating the comb for Crocs, it was about efficiency and about one comb being able to do the majority of the work. So longer comb gives me more control and more stability. It also helps me visualize my lines and stay consistent whether I'm talking to my client or really focused. So again, those of you who are just joining us, Drew Schaefering here, we're in, Bro or in New York. I'm from Brooklyn, I've been in Brooklyn all week. And we're, uh, we're taking a lot of bulk removal out of Gisette's hair without losing the integrity of what she loves. So earlier I was asking you, what do you love about your hair? Like, what does it mean to you? What did you say? Um, I said I love the length. I love how wavy it can be. And um, yeah, did I say anything else? That was about <laughs> it. So yeah, <laughs> mo like most of our clients, we, they love the length and they love the texture of it. So what we're doing is we're preserving as much of the length as we can. And we did that by creating bulk sections to cut from that stemmed off of the radial parting separating front from back, as well as the fronts being separated top from bottom. And if you go back and watch the earlier part of the video, it was all based off of a blueprint at the center of her head. So everything was cut shortest to inside to out. Now as this starts to dry, I'm gonna add a little bit more product. And you can see this is what I mean when I say cutting inside out shows up. Because the shape of the hair is here, I might wanna change the shape or the outline down here or take more or less of the length than earlier. So I only pre-cut a little bit just to get a gauge for what we were comfortable with and now it's just refining. So I'm actually gonna have you stand up. Okay. Somebody's vacuuming something on the hood. So what questions you guys have, shoot them. Courtney's here on the mic, ready to, uh, to help out. And one of the things that I love about the world of hair that I live in is I've gotten to play around with product a lot, from testing to creating um, and to consumer as well as high fashion. And so one thing that I love to do is really push product in new ways. So this, again, is L'Oreal's Texture Transformer from the Technier line, my new favorite product. And what I did is I mixed two pumps of that with two pumps of mythic oil. And so what the object of that is to give a different viscosity. It's a little bit looser now, and it's gonna have a, a more, more of a moisturized weight for her ends and her hair. Without weighing it down, it's still gonna help activate the curl. And what I love about this is we're starting to see more of a, more of a different refinement to hair again after beach waves and the dry texture has been so prevalent. Starting to work with hair in a different fashion, keeping it back to shiny and more of a, a heavier weight to it, that's in a sexy way. So running this through and I can feel the tack still here and I'm actually gonna rub some in her scalp. So how often do you say you shampoo? Uh, two weeks, if I'm feeling. <laughs> so she can get away with two weeks. We shampooed last night, so we're cool. And what the idea is, is I wanna start thinking about what happens to her hair as it goes through her process of those two weeks. So it goes, can it go flat, it gets oily, it gets limp. What are your biggest hair challenges throughout the two weeks? Um, I feel like it's more frizzier. I don't, I'm, I don't really do much, I'm a low maintenance hair kind of a girl, so I don't really do much, so I don't, I air dry it. I also don't put much product. Um, so I feel like I like when it's dirtier, it's more, <laughs> uh, or the, I like it later on as these go back because it's more, uh, more volume. It has that pliability to it, right? Yeah, it's fair. Yeah, a lot of our clients, they love when they, and a lot of us, we love getting that, um, that second day texture and grit into the hair because it helps with the styleability. So that's essentially what we're doing by adding more profits in her hair. So as I'm working through the perimeter before I detail anything around her face anymore, just working on the framework here. And I'm, you can see I'm just pinching and cutting top to bottom through here. The reason for that, if I were to come through and establish my weight line here, and if I were to cut a straight hard line, look how different that is from what I've done. What we're doing by pinching and cutting is we're actually coming from the top. So we're cutting a slight variation in layers that go shorter to longer top to bottom. So we're not gonna have all of this nice texture and then a hard ledge, that's not what we want. 
So we have a couple questions coming in. Um, someone's asking, is this, good, is this technique good for curly hair? Um, she's always careful when doing the slide with the shear technique. Great question. So one thing to clarify is sliding your shears along the hair will rip and cut depending on the position and the angle of the scissor. For today, I actually am wiggling. So it's a slight motion like this when I was up here cutting. It's not grip, catch, and pull. It is a very soft cutting motion that you keep cutting as you go. So the scissors, as they cut and they work on the hair, it's going to make little cuts. But the trick is how smooth you close your hand as, as fast as you're moving your hand. If I stay still and I stay here and I close, I'm gonna cut it hard. If I move too fast and I don't close, I'm gonna rip. So it's a soft balance of the two. So it's a really good question and yes, this is very good on curly hair. And mm -hmm. does the model always part her hair in the middle? How would this technique change if she parted it to the side? Beautiful question. So we'll flip her hair. So which is that she, does, she flips her hair a lot. She wears it back, she changes the part. Since we cut it down the middle, what we know to be true is that it's the loosest and the softest with layering in the center because it was cut short to long inside out. So when this hair flips, it's not gonna have a buildup of weight one side or the other. It's gonna stay soft no matter how she parts it. That's the beauty of this haircut. So I'm gonna spin her around and finish her perimeter. Again, thank you, great questions, everybody. Uh, this, again, the, the concept for the haircut is about efficiency and just removing bulk that we don't need. And it uh, could be new for some of you and it could be reviewed for a lot of us, but this is something that is a blueprint that I keep uh, on hand to use so that I'm not having to reinvent new haircuts every day. You just change the details. So say for a client with thinner hair that wants more precision, instead of doing this freehand, I would go through and lay a hard line in. With somebody who had finer hair, I wouldn't have cut as short of layers in the top. So each fabric of hair that we work with, we have to change our approach, but the blueprint can stay the same, so it takes the guesswork out of everything. And why did you have your client stand up and would you do this if we were in a salon? Great, great question. So, you know, I find that our clients, they sit and they stand very differently. So when a woman's standing up, this is how she's showing up in the world. Her neck is a little more elevated, her shoulders are relaxed. So when I'm doing personalizing, I, I do like to work with them standing up. And yes, I do this in the salon. I'm not afraid to get on my knee if it's the right position. For me, it's just about doing, doing whatever it is for the job. Um, depending on you know where you're at. Some people say don't have the client stand up. Obviously, each salon has their own kind of brand and rules that they live by. So this bit of weight that's sitting here just below her crown is the base of our initial section. So it has a little bit of extra weight through here. We've already layered it top to bottom, so the layers are going shorter to longer. So I don't want to create shorter layers, I just want to cut into some of this weight. So this is a similar version to what I was doing with the big sections when I cut. So it's not a sliding, it's a very controlled close as the scissor glides along the hair. And again, I'm not cutting all of that hair. It's just to break up that, create that lightness right there that we're holding on to. All right, so I'm gonna have Gisette sit back down and we're gonna work on the base frame. So again, when we're, when we're working with clients, we're getting into efficiency, we're getting into their lifestyle as well. We're connecting with them differently now. Uh, we're all on, always on our phones. So they have access to information, but the thing that keep, keeps coming up now is connection. Everyone has access to information, but they don't know how to connect it. So as we keep working with Gisette's hair, we're gonna start drying it, and I'm gonna start using products to carry her through different days of her lifestyle because that's really essentially people will either do something whether it's a hairstyle a habit a pattern if it's easy and convenient they will do it if it's not they won't so my job is to make her hair work for her what now two weeks is what so <laughs> by 14 days of product to get through but i'm going to keep i'm going to start drying and i'm going to keep adding my favorite products of the mythic oil the texture transformer and then i'm even going to use a little bit of weighted mousse and a dry shampoo so the weighted mousse I'm going to use is the Hollywood Waves by Techniart. 
And what I love about it is it's a really, really lightweight cream. So usually, if a product has waves or curls in the name, that means that it's more water-based than alcohol-based. Uh, mousses are either water or alcohol, and this is more of a water base than traditional alcohols because it's not as drying, hence the word waves. Waves and curls need moisture to exist, so that's what this has. So it's not gonna be a sticky, harsh one. It's just going to give her hair that little bit of extra grit. And these products that you're using, can you use them on dry hair as well, or you prefer it damp? So here's my rule. You can use anything on anything. Rule of thumb with hair. Hair is like a sponge. When this hair is dry, if you take a sponge, it will react the same way dry as hair does. Dry hair, dry sponge, it'll soak up whatever you put on it. Wet hair, wet sponge, it goes through and it gets evenly distributed. So for example, next day she wakes up, her hair's a mess through here. If we go through and we spray Dancite, which Dancite is a thickener. For those of us that cook, it's like cornstarch. For those of us that are into clothes, this turns silk into cotton. Okay, so it just thickens. If her hair starts getting oily and messy through here, if we were to spray this straight on there, that might be too much product, dry hair, wet product. However, dampen it with water or dilute it, half and half water product, then it's a recipe for a good morning treatment uh, to spray around your hairline and just revamp it. So that's, I feel, the world that we're living in now. I'm dealing with our clients and personalizing for them. So I'm guessing you don't really use a brush, right? Nope. <laughs> All right, so our goal is to use our hands in a blow dryer and manipulate the hair and get it looking beautiful for her the way it would day to day and better. So I'm using my Dyson Supersonic. What I love about it is first off, it's sexy. I like things that look good. It has um, the new high speeds and the double filter and the, the power and the noise is just perfect. So most dryers I wouldn't be able to talk to while this is on. One of the reasons why I'm loving this. So as I'm working, I'm just manipulating the hair the way that she would. I'm not gonna put a brush through it, but I'm not trying to stretch and drag it out. We're just trying to dry it, using kind of like a rubbing motion with our fingers, just allowing the waves to sit in there a little bit better. And someone's asking if you use mousse in your hair, or is that <laughs> your natural wave? I do not use mousse in my hair, although I might. It would look better. Uh, no, this is natural. I just use like a something to weigh it down so it's not as fluffy. So as we're working with it, just manipulating it the same way that she would be able to. I'm not trying to force it into any style. It's supposed to look good no matter where she goes. So here in New York, I don't know where you live, the summers can get really, really hot, really damp, like humid and just sticky. So people are moving their hair constantly, whether it's flipping it, putting it up, switching it to the side, because it's just always getting stuck and gross. Someone's asking, would you use the diffuser attachment and would that take longer to dry? I would use the diffuser attachment if I wanted her hair to have a very defined curl or a specific shape. Um, you know, I saw one of the, the hair brain lives the other day and they did a beautiful finger wave with clips in it and to preserve that shape then the diffuser the diffuser is perfect for her since we want it to be a little bit more open and erratic the blow dryer is going to do the job and it will be faster the diffuser does take a little bit longer uh, especially on her length of hair it would take too long So again, this other trend that I'm seeing, you know, I was just hosting a class with L'Oreal Professional at our academy here in Soho last weekend, and we were talking, it was trend-based, and we were talking about a lot of different uh, things that are coming. And forever, I feel like hair has been this effortless look that still took a lot of effort, and it turned into kind of a glamour feel. So we had the beach wave craze, which is still strong, but now it's about texture. And uh, my, my good friend Ron Lopez in Colorado was working with me and he was speaking to it in terms of torturing hair. I feel like we no longer have to torture hair to keep texture and to make it look beautiful. Because looking at Jess's, or Jessette's wave right now, that is hard to replicate by using an iron and brushing it out and stretching all the elasticity out then using a curling iron to fry it. I think it's about working and looking at it from a different angle and allowing a sense of natural wave to carry through. So that's one difference about living in New York and, and traveling that I love is you see different cultures. And some of the stylists in our class were shocked 
because the same stuff that is on necessarily our feeds or Pinterest or inspiration boards of the waves that all of our clients are coming and asking for, it didn't exist so much in the city. And that's because we're either following or we're, we're kind of creating our own. And so I, that was a, a cool class for us to try to work on creating our own aesthetic instead of following what everyone else is doing. So again, we're not trying to polish her ends. We want them to look to be free. So with very loose tension, we're just coming in here and just encouraging the hair's natural way. So again, thank you guys for the questions. It's been great. Again, I'm Drew Schaefering. We're here in New York City. I'm here with my beautiful model, Gisette. Gisette and I met, she also is a stylist here in the city. And uh, we met shooting a few months back. And she has this long, gorgeous dark hair that we've taken and essentially cut in a few sections with just refining. And now we're manipulating her hair texture and her elasticity to kind of mimic what she would go through at home, whether it's adding products to fix something, whether it's just adding products to get that more grit the way that she would go through the week. We try to just kind of get to know how her hair reacts to everything so I can give her the best end result as well as styling and product recommendations as we go on. So again, yeah, working with really high moisture, lower holes. Uh, before we started the haircut, we put in about eight pumps of Mythic Oil by L'Oreal Professional. And then we also added a blend of half L'Oreal Professional Mythic Oil as well as the Technier Texture Transformer. Uh, and again, that is like an elastic, elastane cream. We think about gels and things that have a lot of holes. This has a lot less of a hold, so it's almost like a waxy fiber, but it just will add a hold to it when we mix it and add it in the right component. It can be used straight or it can be kind of mixed throughout. So as we dry and just kind of get her hair where we want it to go, we'll keep playing a little bit more. And if we're done cutting, can we take off her cape for now while you're blow drying so we can see her hair a little more? Yeah. So I'm just going to refine the cut so that we can take all of that off and see she's wearing a really cool top, so it's perfect. Alright, I'm going to stand up one more time. So a good friend of mine, I, being based in New York and being more freelance, there are a few salons that I have worked out of and taken clients out of. And a good friend who has a salon in the uh, Carlisle Hotel in the Upper East Side called Yves de Reef, I first started watching him cut a lot of his clients standing up at first and I really didn't always understand why until I started doing it myself and it's really because you get a different perspective and viewpoint when they're standing up as when they're sitting in the chair you know a lot of our clients they slouch they shift they lean to one side uh, things are just so much more open when we're standing so what I'm looking for right now is just kind of what I would say are dead spots spots that don't have a lot of movement we want to preserve as much length, but we don't want any kind of like black holes or dead zones. So as I'm running through it, I have the product in it a little bit. You can see this little buildup of weight. We're just going to go through. And that's all of the front hairline kicking back and falling on itself. So just not layering anything shorter top to bottom, just breaking up weight the same way that we would point cutting just by slicing. And I say slicing, but earlier there's a great question. We're not going through and ripping, so we're not entering it and then ripping. It's a slow, controlled motion of cutting through the hair. So some would call channeling. And you could use that technique on curly hair as well? Yes, that technique is great on curly hair. So again, with Gisette being a stylist and being, you know, a, a trend setter as opposed to a follower, these are moments when taking into account their job and their personality is important because these little details are like flair. They're just like little added bonuses. And with Gisette, she wears cool earrings, a lot of jewelry. There's just a, she likes 
a sense of style. So I have to take mental note of those things in terms of giving her a little bit of extra with her haircut. She's not afraid of that little something. So right now all these little blonde pieces are like four years old from how long her hair is, but it's the last time she had her hair colored. And we're just going off and dusting those. All right, so this is her face framing and we're just cleaning up any pieces that need because we cut it at such a high elevation. What we know to be true is the higher you hold it, the softer it'll fall. So I just wanna make sure that there's nothing that's too sparse in through there. All right, so we'll take the cape off so those of you at home can see a little bit more of the detail. I know dark hair, dark cape, it's not always easy. And again, if you have any questions about whether it's the cut, the detailing, the styling, she already is touching it. Isn't it like funny? We're not, how many of you guys smack the client before they finish? Sorry. Don't be. So what, what I'm looking for is really, I want it to continue to look lived with, continue to look uh, not grimy or grungy, but effortless in terms of like she's been wearing it for a few days and it's just settled. That's the goal. And as you can see, some of this still has a lot of like just tenacity to it. It's a little bit too uh, strong. So what we need is just a little bit of smoothing. So instead of reaching for the blow dryer, really smoothing it out, a quicker fix, a little bit of oil and a little cream. Shumura and L'Oreal Professional. And we're gonna mix those together and it's just gonna kind of revamp and revive our ends a little bit. So maybe turn and flip this way. And again, I'm, I'm working with products that promote shine and moisture. Uh, for the summer, you know, I'm just I'm looking for a different feel as opposed to the, the texture that's dry and a little bit more scratchy than we've been seeing. I'm thinking in terms of heavy and moisture and elasticity. So what we're gonna do is we're going to turn her to the camera. And I wanna share a trick that I've been teaching and working with my clients and it's making a big difference. So what I love about the Crux clips is that they have this protective silicone resistant, heat resistant band in there. So if she were to wake up in the morning, add a little bit of a polymer product, like a texture transformer, which is like a, an elastane lotion or a mousse or anything that has hold and set her hair here, this clip is going to set that shape and that curl for her without leaving an indentation because it has that. So these are really, really good for styling with clients as well as professionals working behind the chair. But these little clips are another thing. So in the session world, we really use these a lot to keep makeup uh, or to keep hair out of the face, to keep things set. And one thing that I'm doing is working with my clients on how to achieve different shapes by using these with little effort. So to get the hair going forward, clamping at the root and coming down, this plastic clip on top, that's gonna keep any little marks or indentations from popping up. Then we're gonna take clip up and we're gonna push and get that to the side and get that shape going away. So the difference is we usually roll and go back but that increases volume here which would then fall forward. We want this to stay sleek and then kick out. So these little clips just allow us a little bit more customizing in terms of day-to-day -day styling, which for us might not be that big of a deal as stylists, but for her to set and change her look to go one day that. And where can people find these clips that you're using? These clips are prototypes for the company that I created, Crux, so I do not have that answer for you. I do know that um, they do make them. However, I don't see them in black very often, so the black ones you'll have to wait for. Uh, but I know if you go to, uh, I'm not sure if Hairbrain has them on their side, I believe they do, their pin curl clips. If they do not, Sheer World, based out of New York, also does. So another great thing for, as weather's getting really warm and things are changing and adjusting, you know, clients wake up and they're doing their hair in the morning. They like, okay, what do I need different? It's either a lotion, it's either weight and moisture, or it's dryness and volume. 
So we're gonna add a little bit more weight and moisture to our hair just to play with it to see how it can go throughout the day to day. And for those of you that are thinking I'm putting a lot of product in her hair, it's because I am. It's because we're also kind of testing it and pushing it so I can kind of help her work with her hair because she's low maintenance. So sometimes we have to push it further than we normally do to see what works the best. And what I know to be true is that this is oil. What's the opposite of oil? Dry shampoo. So we put a little bit too much in, dry shampoo, mattify it. It still has that beautiful kind of texture that she loves right before she has to shampoo it. So not even afraid to go in at the scalp with it. And all of this like imperfect wave, that's exactly what we're going for. That's like her laissez-faire New York vibe. So just a little dry shampoo to make sure it doesn't look too much. So this is Fresh Dust, or Morning After Dust by Techni Art. And what I love about this is it has just the slightest bit of a texturizing agent to it. So it helps lift the hair up off the scalp slightly as opposed to just coating it and weighing it down. So we're gonna use this everywhere except for the extreme length. We put the oil on there for the need to weigh it down. <laughs> the ends can always be shiny. And for those of you using dry shampoos or have clients with issues with dry shampoo, the biggest thing is to use the blow dryer and shake it out afterwards. Because we're essentially putting powder and fragrances in the hair. And it's gonna stay in there and stay put unless we do something with it. Now we'll take hot day, turn the air on cool. And we can see right here, she still has some oil from the underside where I was putting it in. The days of having to shampoo that out are no longer in my schedule, so we're just gonna mat it, keep the cool texture, and get it flushed out with the dryer. So again, my dryer, my air's on cool because we're not trying to set a style anymore. We're just trying to get the, the powders and the dry shampoo all working through our hair instead of staying in one spot. And then at night, in order to maintain a simple, low, easy bun twisting here, if you want perfect symmetry, going both towards the center, twisting, then having my client wrap that up into a ponytail up here or a bun up here while they sleep, bringing these up to the top looser. The reason that we don't want to pull this all the way up top as we sleep is that this is going to dry going up and unless we want a lot of volume everywhere, that's gonna be harder to reset in the morning. So by leaving a little bit of slack, letting that come down, tying everything up here at night, that root direction isn't as shifted and the hair will fall easier into place. The neater we roll this up, the neater it'll fall. So if we go to bed, if we tell our client to go to bed through here, we make it nice and pretty, we put it up, that's gonna fall and it's gonna show ringlets and the product in there it can actually help style it the next day. As soon as anything is janky and it's just like a random elastic, all of those ends are gonna be really messed up. So it's really important to show our clients a few little tricks can save them a world of time. And would you use, suggest using the blow dryer every time your client uses dry shampoo? Uh, or just? Good question. How you just used it? I would say for thicker clients, yes. They do need to use it because as we were talking earlier, you know, Gisette has so much hair and we were saying how when it gets hot outside, that becomes like a greenhouse. It just traps all of this heat in. Same thing with moisture. So if you get it and you spray it, you have to blow that out and get rid of some of that. Otherwise it's gonna sit in there and most likely have like little powder marks or little variations in color. Now you don't technically have to, you can have them shake it, just turn their head over, that's fine. Um, but really it's whatever works for the client. Some people need it, some people don't. So as I'm looking at Gisette's hair one last time, what I'm really focusing on is that 
the movement, so there's the perimeter and the silhouette of the shape, and there's like the internal movement. Are you sure that the hair flows so it's going away from her face so that there's balance with the lines as well as with the movement and the texture? So this is very loose. Again, we started with cutting the shortest layer in the crown. Most of her layers were at the perimeter down through here. We brought her length up probably three, four inches. And we cut everything stemming from here and going out this way towards the face, all on a profile parting. So essentially what that left us was all of this length thrown in and now just detailing it and working with my hands while she's standing up lets me see if there's anything we want to change and we're feeling good. So again, if any of you guys have any last second questions, throw them out. We're wrapping up here. And before we go, Drew, where can everybody find you online? So for those of you that are looking for me, I am at Drew Schaffering on Instagram, Drew Schaffering on Facebook, social media, all of that stuff. Uh, please follow and support Crux Brands, the company I created to help artistic hairdressers stay connected emotionally to our craft. Again, Gisette, stylist in New York, where, is it, where can they find you? Uh, at Gisette.nyc. Uh, yes, J E S S E T T E. That NYC. It's so funny, so many people have to think of like all their different handles. Like, wait, hang on, let me look it up. Um, thank you for tuning in to Hairbrain Facebook Live. Again, supporting all of the hairdressers in the Hairbrain world. Love you for much love from New York. Please DM or reach out if you have any questions on me coming to help educate your salon.